Thank you very much, Mr. Speaker. Uh, Mr. Speaker, at this time I would um, uh, move for leave to introduce a bill, uh, that being Bill 209, the Tailings Ponds Reclamation Statutes Amendment Act 2011. I'm just going to hang on to it while I talk about it. Um, Mr. Speaker, tailings ponds are the picture worth a thousand words of the struggle between developing Alberta's energy sector in the oil sands and environmental protection and stewardship. Given that, um, trillions of words are now across the world showing Alberta with huge, huge tailings ponds and more being added. The government has created Directive uh, 74 through the ERCB um, to set out expectations and requirements on reducing existing and uh, reducing uh, the creation of additional tailings ponds. Bill 209 is designed to complement that, uh, to strengthen the direction of it and to close uh, some of the loopholes that exist. So uh, one of the things that it does is require that the ERCB must uh, prepare a report on Directive 74 and include uh, such things as every instance of an operator failing to meet the reduction of fluid tailing stipulated in Directive 74, every instance where a project has significant changes to its overall tailings plant management under Directive 74, and any amendment uh, uh, granted by the board to a plan uh, for dedicated uh, disposal area, an overall tailings management plan, or an annual tailings management plan, and the reasons for granting that amendment, as well as any instance where an operator has failed to meet or to submit a tailings plan management uh, plan. And that includes dates that go along with each of those. Um, Amending the Oil Sands Conservation Act, uh, the um, Bill 209, the Tailings Ponds Reclamation Statutes Amendment Act 2011, um, also sets out that there would be uh, a report on Directive 74, which would be delivered to the Minister, responsible and tabled in the Assembly. And as part of that, uh, it would include that there would be no amendment, or including repeal, Mr. Uh, Speaker, to Directive 74 that could be made without the board um, publishing a notice of any proposed changes uh, on a public website and the minister's departmental website, um, that the uh, notice would comply with the uh, um, various parts of the section and specifically what I'm looking for there is that there would be a publication of the proposed amendment, that there would be a period that's set out very clearly for the public to give reaction to the proposed amendment and that there would be a very clear uh, closing date for the uh, public feedback session um, as well as any other information that the board considers. Um, and that those comments would then um, uh, be uh, reported to the Minister uh, with recommendations on what changes the Board considers appropriate. Um, the last two points, would, there's also a very specific section on non-compliance which requires that no amendment or waiver to the phase-in sequence of the reduction in fluid tailings or to the overall tailings management plan by an operator would be granted unless the operator can uh, demonstrate extraordinary circumstances or undue hardship. That's trying to close one of those loopholes I was talking about. As well, it requires that um, any information submitted by an operator concerning compliance with Directive 74 um, may be made public by the uh, director or by the um, the board itself. So I'm very proud of this bill, Mr. Speaker. I um, look forward to debating it in the fall session. Uh, and as I said, I um, uh, move first reading of Bill 209.